Hi, I'm Rob Garbas. And I'm Tom Brefney. We're from the Nix marketing team. We'd like to welcome you to the Nix 2.7 release overview. This is the second in a series of Nix release notes videos. I hope you will find this visual walkthrough informative and worth your time. As always, feedback is appreciated in the comments below or by contacting the Nix marketing team. Nix 2.7 is an incremental release of the Nix package manager on a six week release cycle. There are many bug fixes and some new features being added. Many of the changes are related to experimental feature called Flakes, and we are to help stabilize and fix bugs in preparation for an ultimate 3.0 release. This particular release has about 70 issues and 75 PRs that were closed uh, during its the release cycle. First up is performance. Uh, Penne has done quite a bit of work uh, improving the performance over the last few cycles. And this is a quick summary of that work. We can see that we have the Nix releases on the bottom, starting from uh, 2.3.16 all the way to uh, some uh, 2.7, as well as a uh, PR uh, being merged, uh, being labeled here as 2.8 pre-release. As you can see, uh, there are some initial performance regressions uh, up until 2.4 and even into 2.5, but we've been steadily been able to get some of these numbers back down. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit to take a little bit closer look at the section uh, in progress. And you can see that this is for a uh, Nix evaluation. And again, that initial performance degradation and then subsequent uh, improvement uh, as we've gone up to this current release and the potential uh, future performance gains we have along with uh, PR6218, giving us another 10 to 20%. The CPU... Um, Performance improvement usually goes hand in hand also with memory improvements um, of somewhat uh, equivalent magnitude. Next, we're going to look at the changes to the flake.nix format. As you can see, I already installed Nix 270. But before we continue, let's check uh, if flake feature is built on our system. We do this by looking at the Nix Nix config. And there we go, experimental features, Nix command and uh, flakes are there. First, let's look at uh, Nix templates. Let's do this by creating uh, an example uh, flake projects using the Nix flake new command, then specifying the template. Let's say in this case, let's use the full template and give it a name, example. There we go. Uh, there, two features, uh, two additions to the uh, e that were added into 7.0 uh, already shown. First, we are listing all the files that were created. And after that, we are displaying uh, some sort of a welcome text that is defined uh, in each uh, template. Uh, if we look at the example, uh, if you look at this template, you will see that this template consists of uh, two files, which are flake nix and flake uh, flake lock. And if you look at the definition of a template, there we go. And there we go. You will see here uh, we have a, a welcome text definition. Um, that should let everybody, every author of templates to guide uh, the users of a template to the, uh, let's say, documentation uh, or other resources that a user might find uh, useful. Okay, uh, so now let's enter the template and we look at another uh, change that happened uh, in Flake template. Uh, let's first make sure that the log file is up to date. There we go. Log file is up to date. And the next feature can be seen if we run uh, Nix flake check. There we go. It will take some time, but you can already see that uh, some deprecation warnings are being displayed, uh, five in total. These deprecation warnings uh, are about the default output, um, the default outputs. 
And uh, you can see if you're familiar with uh, flake.nix and how um, the defaults are being, um, were being uh, uh, defined, you will see that there are, you will know that there are many inconsistencies. And this is an effort to bring some sort of order and unification uh, in the, uh, the flake.nix. So if we look at, let's say, the over, uh, let's say the default template, right? Let's, let, let's try to fix it. So we go to the flake.nix. So the default template is deprecated and please use templates.default. There we go. I think this is at the end. Exactly. So first we change the default template and we say templates.default. So that's now the, the, that's still the same default. And we also need to change all the uh, reference to this default template. Templates and default. Now, if we were run Nix Flake checked again, we should have one less uh, deprecation warning. There we go. Um, so as you can see, maybe it's obvious, but we didn't break uh, any changes with uh, when introdu when doing this um, uh, flake uh, .nix change, so you can still continue to use old uh, default flake uh, outputs, uh, but I suggest uh, uh, moving to the new ones. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, for, but if you want to know exactly the changes for all the outputs uh, that were changed, please consult the. Uh, the Nix manual. The next change is to the bundler system. First off, what is a bundler? A bundler is going to take a derivation and transform it into something else, usually a self-extracting executable or a Docker image or some sort of standalone artifact. What can this look like? This is where you take some sort of a, a installable and you can just bundle it. Or you can define a particular bundler that you would like to specify and use and transform your derivation using that. So let's go take a look at how this actually looks like in practice. We can take something like a, a normal hello package and say we want to bundle it to something called an Rx executable. What we end up with is a link to this thing. And when we run this thing, it is going to extract itself to temp and is, is now runnable. This allows you to run this on nearly any Linux system that has certain features enabled and certain uh, utilities available. But we can go even farther. We can also produce a Docker image. This is using the bundlers to Docker image uh, bundler. And now we have a uh, tarball. And this is your uh, standard tarball that can be brought into a uh, Docker load or any sort of container runtime. What else can we do? We can show reports. And let's go take a look at now what this one does. This one simply provides uh, a quick runtime report. This was provided by uh, Nmatia a little while ago um, and provides what the dependencies are, licenses, and some of the maintainers. So you, by, giving, by working over a derivation, it could do something a little bit richer and inspect the derivation itself to provide reports or probably to provide other sorts of outputs. Uh, we have similar sorts of bundlers already um, ready to be used to do convert things into an RPM. So you can see now we have an RPM that should allow us to install this in Red Hat, as well as something for turning things into a uh, .deb. Now, all these things are uh, fairly nice, uh, and these extra bundlers are defined at a new repo called bundlers, where we are starting to collect these. The idea being that we could now improve the number of these things and the quality of them in a coordinated fashion, and these will be available to people in a somewhat default manner without them having to do too much. And so contributions are always welcome. So thank you. Uh, that wraps up the bundlers. Next feature that was added is that now Nix displays a helpful suggestion when you mistype something in the command line. For instance, if I would go uh, and I would type really fast and my, I would have some fat fingers, I might uh, mistype and type build. You can see if I press it, the Nix will suggest uh, uh, 
the right command. So if I do next build and I want to install the hello world, but I only type one L, it will suggest a hello. Our next feature is Nix Pink. For this, we have added a little more verbosity so it's easier to tell when something has been successful. So with the Nix 2.6.1, if we try to ping a store, it is going to be successful, but you don't really get much feedback that it was successful. Now, if you ping a store, we end up getting a little bit more information that a about what the version is and where it is. This is uh, going to be on standard error, so it should not impact any sort of scripts or anything like that. Let's go take a look at what happens if we make it something a little bit more uh, realistic as a remote store. So let's go to cache.nixos.org. And same thing. We get a uh, quick result, and it is successful. Now let's see uh, what the error looks like if we go somewhere else. Looks like we have some error with it being resolved. And now we can go take a look at something that does resolve, but is not an actual store. So this is, uh, should make uh, using Nix store ping a little bit easier. Next up, we have the source hut input type. In previous Nix versions, if you tried to use a source hut input type, it would fail. This is not something that was supported, uh, but this was added in 2.7. So now you should be able to use a source hut input type, which is just source hut colon, followed by the uh, user organization name, followed by the repo name. And now we can see we have, uh, we're showing some random flake here. This gonna, uh, is going to be a little bit nicer in terms of usage and also um, has some optimizations that we can uh, start to utilize. So now let's also run this against uh, some uh, file that we have available to us. So we have a markdown file we're going to run this uh, program against. And now let's go take a look at what actually happened. We had a file that had a uh, output defined. And what this program apparently does is it pulls that out and turns it into its own uh, file by pulling out some of its things from the inside of the markdown. Anyway, this is us running something with the source hut input type. And the last feature, I think it's worth to mention is that a bit of UX was added to the next command line. Uh, let's say in your profile, uh, you have um, hello world, uh, uh, hello package installed. You can see it's listed here. Uh, when you're uninstalling it or removing it from the profile, um, uh, no confirmation of what is being removed or is there something removed was uh, displayed. And in this case, now with 270, uh, yeah, we, we are displaying uh, that some something gets removed. And that's the last feature for now. The next release is planned in the middle of April. For those of you in the US, we hope to have it done before taxes are due. At least you'll have an exciting new Nix version to look forward to. This release would not be possible without all the hard work done by the contributors. At the same time, we would also like to thank all the users for bug reports, example of usages, ideas, and for making the Nix community a better place. Thank you. See you next time.